I'm Chaplain Lou Del Tufo. I'm the core chaplain and senior chaplain here at JBLM, and I want to welcome you to our Facebook Live today. I want to tell you today about all the exciting things going on around JBLM in the religious support world. First, unit chaplains can have unit services. So if you don't know where those are, go ask your unit chaplain. I have one this weekend over at my house in the outside the housing area. I was able to work with our friends over at MWR and through the garrison commander. We're going to have the basketball court. It's covered. We're going to have Protestant service at 10 o'clock and we're going to have Catholic service at 11 o'clock. Field services, low key. We just want you to come out. We want you to come check out our Spirit of Courage Chapel. If you don't know where your religious group is meeting, go on our Facebook site and download our latest purple hash message that has the, all the approved chapel services on it. Also, you may note that as we move up phases in Pierce County, we're getting ready to reopen some of our chapel facilities. Our religious affairs specialists have been hard at work. They had their rulers out. They're making sure that everybody's properly social distanced. They're measuring off seats and we want you to feel comfortable as you come back. So we're going to take some extra precautions as we clean the chapels. We may not have children's programs inside the chapels right away, but we're working on getting those back as soon as we can. Also want to talk about as we get ready to open up, it's not going to be going back to the way it was. We're going to go into a new normal. You're going to see some new services that we're going to have to offer. We're going to have a Jewish chaplain that just signed into post and they're going to offer some Jewish services. I hear that we have a Eastern Orthodox chaplain, so we're going to figure out how to work him into the schedule. We have a number of Anglican chaplains coming in, so we're going to start, to start up some Anglican services and as well as new chapel services out on McCord Airfield. It's called Reach and Chapel Next is coming back and Main Post Chapel traditional services as well as our Catholic services and our Buddhist services. So just look for a new feel. Um, with that, I want to turn it over to Chaplain Schaffner who's going to talk to us about Vacation Bible School. I'm going to take my ruler with me if that's okay, Chaplain Schaffner. Go ahead. That's all right. <laughs> this morning, our focus uh, for you is going to be on Vacation Bible School. And so I wanted to just uh, throw my prelude in here about uh, our general programs as Chaplain Del Tufo kind of gave you a segue into that. Um, when we're back to normal operations, we have a very, very robust religious education program here at JBLM. And so you're gonna see uh, all of those programs beginning to return uh, as we begin to open the chapels back up. So please uh, look for uh, Awana, look for uh, Sunday school for our kids, look for CCD for our Catholic kids. Uh, we have First Communion coming up for uh, our Catholic congregations. We've got a plethora of, uh, of programs that are primarily geared towards our kids, but then that also expands out to programs, religious education programs that we have for our adults as well. So as we begin to open back up the chapel services, our first focus is going to be getting everybody uh, in the habit of coming back into the building for worship services. And as Chaplain Del Tufo said, those are gonna look slightly different, uh, it, it, especially for the first couple of months we're back. Uh, but uh, as we slowly build back into the new normal, we will continue to expand that base and add back into that base our religious education programs, uh, starting with the focus on the kids. So the uh, premier event that we do every year for our kiddos uh, here on, uh, on JBLM is Vacation Bible School. And so we've invited our Director of Religious Education, uh, Jim Freitag, and his right-hand man, Brian O, are gonna come and uh, walk us through what Vacation Bible School is gonna look like this year because it's going to be slightly different uh, uh, because of the, the COVID uh, outbreak and some other logistics things. So they're going to walk us through what Vacation Bible School is going to look like uh, this year. And then, uh, as always, please send us in your questions. Uh, send us questions about any of the three things we've talked about. It, uh, what services are going to look like when they come back, religious education program in the broad sense, or Vacation Bible School programs uh, in specific. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Jim Freitag, 
who is our uh, Senior Director of Religious Education. Jim? Thank you, Chaplain Schachter, and cha thank you, Chaplain Del Cupo, as well. Brian, come on up. This is uh, Mr. Brian O, uh, of our DRE team, and a, a joy to work with. It is great that both Chaplain Del Tufo and Chaplain Schaffner are stressing integrated teamwork and chapel teams, and we will be conducting Vacation Bible School this year using that concept, and we're really looking forward to moving in a new direction, especially responding to our current situation with the pandemic and our HP con levels, as we call it, health protection uh, level uh, conditions, and everything that we will do. First of all, first and foremost, Brian, will there be VBS this summer? Yes. Yes, there will be Vacation <laughs> Bible School. We are changing the dates, however. We are moving our July dates into August. So Vacation Bible School will take place 10 to 14 August. Again, what were those dates, Brian? August 10th from uh, 14th. 10 to 14. Good. Go ahead and show them that first flyer there. Uh, what we want to note for you is to mitigate this, we are actually doing small group vacation Bible school of 25 to 30 kids. We're going to have three times each day for five days programs at five chapel outdoor locations. Again, let me say that three times a day having a program, different program, at five different chapel locations. That's not five, not ten, but I don't know, I have another hand. Put your hand up there, Brian, will you? Uh, right, there we go, 15, there we go. 15 <laughs> vacation Bible school programs of 25 to 30 kids involved in each. At those, uh, at specific times, I'll share just in a moment. This is gonna enable us to have 375 to 450 children involved in Vacation Bible School, as well as their great supporting team, uh, teams of adults that will be there as well. So again, 10 to 14 August, three times each day at five chapel outdoor locations. Let's get into the more specifics. Next slide, Brian, please. Okay. So what we are talking about is having our outdoor locations at those chapels that you can see up on your screen. We are using Main Chapel West for our Catholic program, Main Chapel South for our Protestant uh, program, Four Chaplains Memorial Chapel for our Protestant program, Joint Base Lewis McCord North Chapel for our Protestant program, and the newly opened McCord Chapel Support Center up on McCord Field uh, for our Protestant program as well. So there's gonna be lots of opportunities at these five locations three times per day as you can see on the other side of the chart one session meeting at 9 a.m one session meeting at noon 12 p.m and the third session meeting at 2 30 p.m each day each session is going to be two hours in length and they're going to be outside each of our chapel areas has a grassy area we're looking to secure some uh, canopy tents that we're going to be using the program. And we also have, uh, because of the small group size, the, if it's inclement weather, we will be able to move into the large group chapel areas at each of those chapels uh, mentioned. As I said before, with 15 programs, you don't come to all the programs. You just pick one and go to that one the entire week at that time. So if you pick the 9 o'clock uh, session, you go to the 9 o'clock session all week, if you pick the noon, you go to the noon all week, if you pick the 2.30 p.m., you go to that program all week. So we're really excited about what is going to happen and how are we going to put this all together. Uh, we're working on our themes right now and that will here within a couple of days. But where do you go to get the, Brian, where do we go to get the great information about Vacation Bible School? Who has it? Where can we find it? Well, it's all found right here. We will have all of our Vacation Bible School information, registration, and everything else posted on our fantastic Facebook page. Just, if you go on Facebook, look for JBLM, or even if you just Google or on your search engine, JBLM Religious Support will take it right to that Facebook page and we are going to start posting next week all the specific information about these locations again, the times, 
and we will have a registration uh, form, excuse me, I couldn't think of the word. We will have a registration form that you will be able to download and register your participating children uh, in that process. Jim, uh, yes. I, I have a question. Yes, Brian. Um, I'm attending Main Post Chapel. Yes. And then, uh, their slide is all uh, filled out. Then, um, how can how, you still fit in? Yes. Yes, because what we're going to do in the registration process is we're going to give you uh, an order of preference. For it, you will say, I want to attend this chapel location at this time. Here's my first choice, my second choice, my third choice, and so on. And that way, we'll gear, gear you to a uh, opening you know, in the positions that are there. As we said, we can accommodate up to between 375 and 450 uh, children in this process. So we're looking forward to your involvement and everything in. Do we have any questions in the meantime that are coming in regarding this whole process? What are the questions might so, you have, uh, uh, what's in that program? What's, uh... Oh, we're going to do some of the traditional great vacation Bible school things. We're going to have some great Bible lessons, Bible uh, stories uh, coming from all parts of the Bible. Okay. What about songs? Well, oh, music, you bet, is a part of it, too. <laughs> you know, the children's songs and everything that goes into that is, is going to be there. We're going to have um, some outdoor recreation because we're going to be outside, right? It's yes. going to work out. And we're also going to have some refreshments. Oh, okay. okay. And so, um, some things like that as well. Uh, if I send my child to that program, do I have to uh, bring some uh, lunch boxes, like a uh, five bread, uh, roll of bread and two fishes? Oh, that? that's a great question. No, if you're participating, <laughs> unless your child has specific uh, nutritional requirements, because of allergies and stuff, you don't need to bring anything. Of course, when we pass out the snack time, we might ask you or identify on our registration forms if you actually need uh, to accommodate, we need to accommodate special needs like that for nutrition or health concerns. Right. Uh, and also, uh, it is very important to uh, inform uh, all chapel volunteers and DRA team uh, about your child's uh, special medical condition. Yes. So uh, last uh, summer, uh, we had uh, some uh, diabetes, uh, child with diabetes, and then uh, uh, that information was very helpful to uh, support the child. And, and that's, also, part of, uh, that's part of the registration process as well. There's going to be a medical release form, okay, in order for you to identify any special concerns are there. But what about photos, Brian? Oh, definitely uh, uh, parents should uh, allow us to utilize their uh, children's photo. So in order to do that, they need to... Uh, give us permit. Yes, we'll have a photo release form as part of the registration packet as well, allowing us uh, permission, with your permission, to take children's pictures. Of course, we can always take pictures from the back that don't show child's faces, but if you would like your, uh, you know, we would need your permission to, to actually use uh, some FaceTime pictures uh, of our participants. Do we have some questions? Fantastic, here's one here. Who can come to Vacation Bible School? That's a great question. Thanks for asking that. Anybody who is in the military, active duty, uh, families especially, because we want to link you not, any, not only to Vacation Bible School, but we want to link you to our community. JBLM is a great place to be, don't you think, Brian? That's right. I mean, we've been, Brian and I, we've been both in the service. We've been different locations, and we love Joint Base Lewis uh, McCord. And the community that we are building here, we want you to be a part of. Vacation Bible School is part of it. Also, our retirees and, and our locals will be given, if there's room at the end of making sure we got our preference for our active duty families, there'll be some considerations there. But first and foremost, our active duty families uh, are the people that we want. And when we say active duty families, we mean military across the board. Uh, that includes our great friends that are in the Air Force as well as our great form, uh, friends that are in the Army. And also uh, this event uh, will be a very good opportunity to uh, bring these families into our chapel community. Right. So uh, throughout uh, this uh, uh, event, hopefully uh, new, new uh, comers and uh, new families here in this community can find a good community at the chapel. Right, and we want to, so we want to start to think about how do we integrate, integrate you, not only to Vacation Bible School, but the greater JBLM community, to include our chapel uh, communities. We have some fantastic faith communities that, that are here in the base. 
I mentioned that there are two locations that we'll be he uh, holding on uh, Main Chapel for Vacation Bible School, the west side, the south side. What I meant by that is we actually have a building that's big enough and we have two grassy areas on each side of our chapel. So one side we will have uh, one program, the other side will have the other program. And as I mentioned, hopefully we'll be able to facilitate some of those outdoor canopy tents uh, to use part of that process to kind of quadrant off a little bit and have that teaching area and do those great things that we do at Vacation Bible School. So keep in mind that all of the Catholic programs, the three Catholic programs will be held at Main Chapel. There will be a Protestant program there as well. Other questions? Thank you. Okay, Jim, uh, I have a question for oh, you. Oh, go ahead, Brian. You know, listening to your uh, promotion and all these uh, good events, uh, what if I want to volunteer for this event? Oh, that, we're going to come into that, but I'm glad that you brought that up, though. Uh, our volunteers, when you, if you go to that site, okay, we're looking for a, a couple of avenues. First of all, if you're involved in one of the faith communities that's going to be hosting Vacation Bible School, you have your avenue there with your chapel team, with your chaplain team at that chapel. That's one way. Also, we'll have some general information about how you volunteer and how do you get involved uh, in Vacation Bible School at this uh, Facebook site. So that will be kind of our catch-all location to find that information. Yes. Great question, Brian. Okay, next one. Is the program at each location the same or different? The program on the Protestant side will be the same at each location at each time. And the team that will be leading the program will be the te same team for each location. Uh, our Catholic program, of course, will be a little bit unique, uh, following some more of the tenets of, that, of what we find within Catholicism. So we're going to support them and our Roman Catholic friends and their uh, DRE Linda, who could not be here uh, today with us, is had spearheading that effort, and she's doing a fantastic job pulling together a lot of great lay volunteers and chaplains and so forth from the Catholic community. So we're really excited about what they're putting together, too, for the Roman Catholic Sierra base. So great questions. Other questions? Oh, here's another one coming. Okay. Uh, will children wear masks during vacation Bible school? Katie, thanks for that question. That's a great situation. What we are doing is, as we are planning out our vacation Bible school time, we are going for the perhaps the most extreme measures to include the possibility of face masks, the possibility of even uh, taking temperatures, asking questions, everything, and then scaling back from that, depending upon what the H, uh, the Health Protection Condition Standard (HPCon) standard will be for that time. We're anticipating and hoping and praying by the time that we come to uh, this time in August that some of those minor, some of those restrictions will be lifted and we're in the more minor ones. Of course, we're going to maintain our social distancing. That's why we want to use our outside areas um, as well as um, having the interaction there in a controlled environment. So great question, Katie. Thank you for asking that. Okay, we got another one coming, but Brian, anything else that you can think of? Um, I, I have uh, some uh, volunteer uh, uh, candidates, and uh, I'd like to uh, know, uh, because um, they haven't done volunteering with children, then uh, what is required for uh, volunteering with children? Fantastic. What we require for those who are volunteers is we need to have a background check for those who are be involved in the program. Now, we do have what allowance for us, and that is those who are not able to secure a background check in time can actually volunteer under what's called line of sight supervision. So we actually will have some individuals involved with Vacation Bible School that have adv advanced background checks that are given the ability to perform line of sight supervision for those who are not able to get that full clearance yet. But we keep working toward that, and it's a, a great process to use, and uh, the great thing is, is once you get a, a clearance to work with children on base, you can use that clearance across the base for, uh, for a five-year period, uh, regardless if it's MWR or CYS pro projects or, or the RSO and all of our great religious education events that are going on. Oh, another question here, okay. Um, what is the youngest a child can be a volunteer? What a great question. Actually, the chief of chaplains of the Army has put out some guidelines for us, and a bona fide chaplain volunteer, chapel volunteer, 
has to be at the minimally 12 years of age. We can actually do a background check on a 12-year-old youth uh, who is uh, a volunteer. So that is a great question, so that's the youngest. And of course, we also want an opportunity for our 12-year-olds to participate in Vacation Bob School as well. Our ages that we are targeting, I don't think I included that. Oh, I'm glad that, that came up. Our ages that we're targeting for Vacation and Bible School are age four, potty trained, okay, through age 12. So if you have a child within that age uh, category, that is our target population for Vacation Bible School. Thank you, I've got a couple more questions. They're coming in great. Can I volunteer before the start date? Definitely. Um, if you would like to contact myself or Brian right now, you can do that. My phone number is 253-966-7396. That's it. I never called myself. Um, and, or you can find me at james.a.freitag4.civ at, if you, uh, excuse me, at uh, mail.mil. I'm getting confused here. My uh, military civilian address. Uh, so if you search on myself, uh, James Freitag on the global, you can find me. That's Foxtrot, Romeo, Echo, India, Tango, Alpha, Golf, the German word for Friday. Okay, here's another one. Will there be child care at Vacation Bible School uh, for volunteers? We are uncertain of that at this point. Uh, we do not know what the health protection measures will be. We will explore that definitely and get back to that question because we definitely want an opportunity for all of our volunteers to come and participate if they need uh, watch care or child care as well. We have, uh, I'm glad that came up because we need to explore that question. So thank you for whoever offered that one out there as well. Okay, other questions? Jim, uh, what's the oldest child can attend this? Uh uh, vacation Bible school? Well, we said about age 12, okay. okay. Um, also, uh, the question came up, and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned this too, is the Catholic community is making some provisions also for special needs children. So if you have a child that has some special needs, uh, we can accommodate you in the Catholic program if your background is Roman Catholic. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, what else are we missing? Okay. Well, thank you for the time that we had today. Um, it is a, oh, you got one, Brian? Yes, I yes. think uh, my okay. email address is much easier than yours. Yes, it is. Yeah. If you want to get brian.y.oh at uh, oh.civ at mail.mail. Again, brian, B-R-I-A-N dot y dot O-H dot C-I-V at mail.mail. That is true. You don't have the German name for some reason. Uh, my last name is divine name, last name. Do you know God's last name? God's last name is O. Oh. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yes. Okay, God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a blessed day, and it was great talking to you. <laughs>